the first qualitatively that made them rich, the first thing that really made them rich. Guys, come on now, you've been sleeping for this hour. <laughs> come on now. Slave. That's exactly right. It is slavery that generated the primitive capital, the primitive accumulation of capital that later made industrial and then of course financial capital possible. On a, on a grand scale, it's all true, okay? So that's why this is so important, and that's why the black question is so important, that's why understanding the evolution of black people and their struggle against oppression is so important, because that was the beginning of capitalism, slavery. Not just in the United States, by the way, slavery was an international phenomenon. Okay? And we're gonna talk about it, I'm gonna show you films about it in different countries at different times. You know, I'll show you. you. Did you ever hear of Wilberforce? Wilberforce, a name. Yeah, um, I will open my Wilberforce University. And who was Wilberforce? Is he related to Malcolm X? Huh? Is he related to Malcolm X? On a certain level. No, no, never mind, sorry. I'll, I'll no, on a certain time. level, on a certain time. level, <laughs> even though he's a white fella, on a certain level, he is related to Malcolm X in that he was one of the first successful abolitionists. He led the struggle to basically abolish slavery in England. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. The tie I was making about Gunnar was actually his brother attended Wilberforce too. Okay. So but you hear what I'm saying? That in an odd way, how people can be related. So that's why we wanted to touch the beginning of chattel slavery in America, so that you would understand. See, there are people, I don't think people mean any harm. We don't, when we study, we try to study objectively, not to rouse our emotions so much, although I know it's hard not to get aroused in, in some ways, but that's not the aim of what we're doing. What we're doing is we're trying to understand. That's what we're struggling with. We're struggling to understand. And in that struggle to understand, we look at some pretty difficult questions. And so some people, people before me, have said that slavery was a feudal mode of production. Mode of production. You're going to look that up yourself. We're going to talk about that. We're about to close this up tonight. But just know, what do we see today, clearly? That slavery was nothing but capitalism, straight up and down. It's very clearly a capitalist you know, in the United States, for sure, it was capitalist. So, even though slavery was one of the first forms of human exploitation, the Greeks, Roman society, the Egyptians, while it was one of the first forms of human exploitation, it was brought back and became the financial basis of a developing capitalist system. And that's very important, I think, to understand the origins of where we are now. How did we get here? Well, slavery played that role, you know. And with that, we're gonna we're gonna break up tonight, and we're going to reconvene in two weeks. Okay. Now, when we reconvene, I can I tell you what I want you to be ready for. I want you to bring with you something that you think is interesting, that you have read, anything from an article, which maybe we might want to introduce it, to a book or a pamphlet. Excuse me, sir. It's all here. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's quite a bit. No doubt. No doubt there's quite a bit here. But I want, I want you, a little effort, a little teeny bit of effort, to bring something in here. And tell us why you think it's important. Something you actually devoured and read. Uh, you'd be surprised, man. I, I, uh, people used to read books in this country a lot. When I was a little kid, I read. Uh, I remember one of the first anti-racist books I read. I didn't even know it was an anti-racist book. I just liked it. Huckleberry Finn, the story of Jim, you know, the runaway slave. Huckleberry Finn, traveling on the Mississippi together. Very interesting story. A friend of mine just wrote 
the continuation of that story as a novel. It's kind of interesting, but can you read it? <laughs> actually, I could, and I wouldn't mind sharing. He's very interesting, but I think he's already. I think he picked up the publisher already. Point is, though, that's what that's all you got to do for next week. Then what we're going to do is we're going to discuss our path. Because here, in my mind, what I want to study, Haitian Revolution is one thing I think we need to look at. More on American slavery. I want to get into some detail on the abolitionist movement and the Underground Railroad. The Civil War in America. I'm sorry. We don't know the Civil War. I mean, some of us don't even know why the Civil War took place, really. And don't understand the real dynamics that led to the most bloody conflict that ever happened in terms of America. More Americans died in the Civil War than any other war America has participated in combined. In other words, over a million Americans died during the Civil War. I can tell you that or even World War I and World War II, where a sizable number of Americans did die, didn't come anywhere near one million. You know, the Vietnam War was 60,000. Iraq was 5,000. You know, the Civil War was a, a very serious event. And it's kind of shocking that Americans are not uh, a little more interested in it because it really set the direction of the whole nation in, in, in some ways the world. So that's Civil War. We're going to study what followed the Civil War, which was called the period of Reconstruction, and the defeat of Reconstruction, and the advent of Jim Crow. We're going to talk about the populist movement. Most people know very little about the populist movement. People don't know there was, there was a populist party in America that was very different from the Let's say this Tea Party that tries to portray itself as a populist party. Really, you just have these billionaire backers. But this was a rank and file populist movement that existed in the United States. The number of members they had exceeded both the Democrat and Republican Party. This is a serious sort of why, why did they never talk about it? Well, we'll talk about it. No, we're going to talk about it a little bit. At least so you know. Okay? We're going to talk about the Marcus Garvey uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association. We're going to talk about what's called the Negro Renaissance in America, how it happened, why it happened. And going on into uh, the, the American trade unions and black people, and eventually the great migration of blacks from the South to the Northern Industrial Centers the Civil Rights Movement, and the rise and fall of the Black Panthers and the Black Power Movement, and that brings us pretty much to today. So you see, with, with some detail, we, we're going to get into it. And why am I telling you this? I want you to encourage your friends. You have friends. Tell them. I guarantee you this. It will be interesting. Okay? So that's going to be it for today, and we're going to, two weeks from now, I promise not to be late again. That I know you have to find people who are going to be here. Seven o'clock. And what are you going to bring? Something we find interesting. On? Black liberation. Okay. That's, that's not just something you found interesting, something you found interesting. <laughs> okay. Anybody interested in attending our class can, can join us here at. The Neville Proctor Library, located 6501 Telegraph Avenue, right on Telegraph, Monday from 7 to 9. All right, so that two Mondays from now will be June what? June what? June what? I can look it up in my calendar. Oh. <laughs>